afternoon. Uh, my former professor at Ahmedabad, Professor Jaoju, uh, former governor, Dr. Vaivi Reddy, Dr. Rama Shastri, my colleague, Mr. Gandhi, um, other colleagues from the regional office, including Mr. Das, the regional director, distinguished bankers, and uh, dear friends. Um, let me first congratulate IDRBT on uh, the fantastic range of work that they're doing and keeping us abreast of all the developments in technology as well as providing a coordinating function for the banking system in terms of what the banking system ought to know, what it should react to, and how it should keep pace with the tremendous developments that are happening. So, um, after congratulating IDRBT, let me also congratulate the banking system itself, the winners of the IDRBT Banking Technology Excellence Awards this year. Uh, the awards were instituted in 2001, so they've been given for a long time, but it also reflects the amount of innovation and action that has been taken by the banking system in, these, uh, in this decade and a half. What I want to talk about today in, in, in the brief time that I have is, uh, is really about uh, you know, some of the applications of the kind of technology that we've seen, and especially in the area of payment systems where the advances are, uh, are uh, tremendous. And uh, in fact, um, you know, it's uh, something that we keep uh, using lightly, but I think is a reality in the payment system. We're seeing a revolution happening before our eyes. Now, um, payment systems are in many ways the plumbing of the financial system. It can become catastrophic very quickly, and you really know that the system is having deep problems. So it's important for us that the payment system function effectively and seamlessly. And increasingly, it's important for us because the payment system is the means by which we need uh, an aim to include much of the unincluded or excluded population. Now, as the regulator of the payment and settlement system in the country, uh, our job is to make sure that the necessary regulatory framework is developed, and we try and do it through a consultative process. And we try and ensure that in doing so, uh, we cater to all the different segments of society that we have. Uh, obviously, we want to ensure that there's easy accessibility of the system, that the system is interoperable, and importantly, as Mr. Gandhi mentioned, that it's safe and secure, something which cannot be easily taken for granted in these days of increasingly innovative cyber crimes. We also want to encourage a variety of payment channels, not only because they cater to diverse needs, but because they add resilience. If you have diversity in payment channels, one channel being attacked or one channel having specific problems, doesn't damage the entire system if we can rely on technological change. We can no longer take that for granted. That may indeed change as some of these fintech companies, as well as non-bank entities such as NBFCs, provide innovative new solutions and products uh, which will force banks to reflect and rethink some of their strategies. Now, um, thus far, the strategy for banks, the strategy choice, has really been, do we compete or do we collaborate, right? And, and, and there, I think, um, of course, uh, one cannot compete effectively if one hasn't been investing in technology and the associated personnel over time. And it's not too late to pick up, but it's extremely important that appropriate investments go in this area because clearly this is going to be key to the future. At the same time, if banks decide to outsource uh, some of this strength and attempt to collaborate without building these capabilities, there's a very real danger that they may be left with crumbs uh, from the client while their partner takes the whole client cake. In fact, uh, from RBI's perspective, um, we, we really don't mind whether it's collaboration or competition. What we do mind 
is when concerns about doing either lead to paralysis. As, for example, we had when for a long period mobile companies and banks were not willing to work together uh, using mobile technology for fear that one would capture the other's clients. We're glad that with the licensing of payment banks, that fear, that logjam has been broken and a number of alliances between banks and mobile companies are now underway. And I'm sure that a whole new set of entities will start forming alliances to uh, deliver payment systems effectively. Now, let me very quickly describe how we would like to see the payment system evolving. Again, because we don't know the future, and the future can be very, very different from what we imagine, um, one has to be fairly uh, uh, broad in how one describes what uh, one can expect, because the future will almost surely surprise us in terms of the solutions that will emerge. Now, what we do want is that uh, our regulations governing payment systems have to be devised in such a way that they're ownership neutral, institution neutral, and technology neutral, so that we can encourage the most effective outcomes to, uh, efficient and effective outcomes to emerge. Also, uh, and this is something that we are adapting to, we have to learn to adapt, and we are uh, adapting, we have to be more open to experimentation at the early stage of a product or at the early stage of release of a method of service. Um, I think you will see this openness to experimentation in the soon to be released peer-to-peer -peer lending regulations. But the idea is at early stages, we have to be uh, open. But as the product grows and, and becomes more important, and becomes systemically important, we have to be more conscious of the risk to stability and at that, that point, make sure that we have all angles covered, that we understand the product fully, and the regulations are in place to prevent excessive risk. Now, this is an approach that has been developing in the RBI. It has a novel name in some other places. It's called the sandbox approach. Let the kids play in the sandbox. Let them do anything so long as they don't do anything too dangerous. And it's only when they start emerging out of the sandbox that you pay significantly more attention. We don't want to completely ignore what's happening in the sandbox. There are a whole lot of places where we can help. But at the same time, uh, we want to make sure that there's enough scope for experimentation so that we develop the best technologies. Second, we prefer that payment platforms offer broader access rather than narrower access. So. Um, you know, we would like uh, entities uh, and especially critical channels in the payment function to be publicly or widely owned rather than very narrowly owned and monopolies emerging. Um, third, we would like, and, and one example of this where it's publicly or broadly owned is the um, Aadhaar Bridge, uh, which...